Amy Jenkins. Nice to meet you. I'm friendly with your producer, Mary Kerr, who uh, introduced me to you and, and, and to the film, Instructions on Parting, your, your documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was a highly intense film to watch. Let's, let's give a little bit background first before, before I ask you about making a, such a work must feel like, you know, and, and these years later is putting it out in the world now for everyone to see. Again, it's called Instructions on Parting, and it, it's about this very specific period between two thousand year 2000 and 2006 where you not only gave birth to your first child, right? You have two. This was your first but you went through losing most of your family to illnesses. Yes. At the time, why were you filming? Did you know you wanted to make a film from this? Uh, what was the intention behind it? At the time, I was a visual artist. and um, You still are. Yes, I still am. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, and my artwork um, was primarily video, sculpture, multimedia Mm -hmm. multi-channel, time-based work. So I was very familiar with how to use a camera. um, And I had a small camera that uh, I was really comfortable with, and I knew exactly what it could see, Mm -hmm. and I never needed to look through the eyepiece, and it was kind of like my video journal. So so when you... This period, even though it begins in 2000, you had been filming your family. Nor- I mean, they were already used to you yes. with camera in hand. It was like I had a been thing. filming my uh, family and um, my life as a sort of personal video journal, journal mm-hmm. um, for many years, and prior to that, also through photography. So my family was very comfortable with my camera. Right. And I Explains been, their ease of yes. being in front of the camera, especially during this incredibly personal time, right? Where Absolutely. maybe most people might have a harder time being so open. And the film begins actually before everybody is sick when I'm meeting my husband um, and uh, we are learning we're pregnant. Um, and so I, I almost term that like the fairy tale section of the, of the film because yeah. um, everything is unfolding in this uh, kind of it's about the beginnings. beautiful way. Right. Um, and then while I'm pregnant, uh, I discover that my mother and sister have been diagnosed with, with cancer. Did they know that they were sick before you got pregnant? Or no. did they just, they, they, you, they told you as soon as they knew? Um, they were both diagnosed within a few weeks of each other when I was about three months pregnant. Mm. And one of the early um, parts of the film, which I'm writing in my journal, is that I had learned that day that um, pregnancy and cancer are the only two moments in, uh, in which you have a kind of foreign growth in your body that is um, of you, uh, but not um, part of you. Right, and not meant to stay in you. Not meant to stay, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Wow, that's a, that is a, a, a perspective one shouldn't have to come upon necessarily in their lifetimes, ideally, mm. but it is, it's a fascinating concept, you know, which informs, you know, definitely informs a film because these things are taking place. You give birth right on top of this this uh, more this intense experience and also just to clarify I didn't realize I was making a film while I was filming this Um, I was recording this for my own personal um, kind of archive of my family and um, also to kind of as a way of holding on to them uh, it wasn't until six years after what you see is the concluding scene in the film that um, I even decided to make this film. I had to um, step basically back into a film, found the box of tapes, looked at them, and realized, wow, this is like raw, amazing, kind of really honest footage about a universal experience, and this needs to be a film. Yeah. So now I have to learn how to make a film. <laughs> yeah, right. It's one thing to have the footage. It's another to make a film. Oh, that right. And, okay, uh, one, one other thing we need to mention before we talk about the, the film filmmaking aspect to this, but you, so you have all this footage. Your mother, during the course of this of your filming, she, she passes away. 
first, Ellen. Actually, Linda passes away first. Oh, oh okay. That's okay. I don't know why I remembered it, in River, but that, that may be just because that's just the, so awful for a parent, especially one who's confronting their own mortality and the responsibility a parent feels around that. And mm. then to see their, their child go, is, uh, it'd be very tough on your mother. Uh, certainly, we see it on your father yeah. in the film. So your sister goes first, Linda, and then then your mother. And then just around that time, you find out that your brother has also... It's it's actually um, a very rare sarcoma, sarcoma that he was diagnosed with. Um, and it was a complete uh, shock, clearly. It was within a few weeks of my um, mother's funeral. Um and uh, he is pretty remarkable in the film. It's a kind of important turning point in the way that he handles his cancer. Mm. And um, he, uh, each person, in a way, kind of lives and um, deals with their illness in the, in, very much in the way they are in their lives. And um, mm, right. so he, his approach is... Um, multifaceted with a sort of humor and you know he comes Sensitive. kind of a buddhist or he is a buddhist but he comes kind of very buddha like um and uh um we had a very close relationship and he also lived longer and so um we had more opportunity to really explore what was going on um together mm -hmm. it's a very remarkable and exceptional story D did you have survivor's guilt I just I mean, I mean, it's you and your dad. Yeah, my dad and I are pretty much the only remaining family members. Is he still um, around? He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I just never... Uh, did you worry for your... Did you? I know it doesn't necessarily make maybe practical sense, but you must have also just been concerned for your own health. I mean, if you... Well, um, going through you know, the deaths of my three immediate family members mm -hmm. uh, is a, gave me a perspective on kind of the value of how I want to live my life. And um, uh, so I certainly um, am more aware of my own mortality mm -hmm. and my um, sense of, of place and time on, uh, on earth. And I'm also, uh, I think... Um, really grateful every time I have a birthday. Um, there are certain rituals within the film, um, cycles that are very universal to all of the, all of us. Mm -hmm. Birthdays are one of them that come up a number of times in the film. Um, and, uh, so of course I'm vigilant about checking myself, uh, for cancer, uh, yeah. you know, having screenings, etc. Um, but I think one thing that this film does address um and that we all kind of forget especially when we're in our youth is that you know we're all gonna die um and so it's more about how we choose to live and um and that's the uh, um, important part um, important message in the film absolutely did you feel like uh, you needed this there was this time uh, uh in the 10 years that transpired was that you needed that time. I, I, I assume you, you, you know, you <laughs> couldn't have made the film before you did. It's true. Um, essentially I knew I had this box of tapes, but I didn't know what was on them. Mm -hmm. It was in, uh, they were unlabeled. Um, the, uh, footage I'd been making at the time of my family's illnesses, um, was not just documenting them. I was also kind of very actively filming the nature in my yard and um, mm -hmm. as almost a visual meditation or sort of kind of coping mechanism mm -hmm. um, for what was going on currently in my family. Um, and I also had filmed these um, more artistic kind of um, scenes that my family agreed for me to film, which was them against black, a back, black, black background with mm -hmm. my hands um, kind of touching their surgical scars and um, very formal portraits. Um, and those are what, at the time, I kind of considered to be my artwork. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because it was stylistically similar to the way I had been working. Um, So these three very disparate methods of filming, I at the time didn't really recognize the relationship between them. And, um, and I decided to put them all in a box. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then many years went by, but that box kept kind of like, yes, it was yelling at me from the corner, you know, deal with me. Um, And I had a second child. Um, I left Brooklyn. I moved to New Hampshire full time. So many things transpired. And then finally, um, I went on an artist residency to Yaddo and spent two weeks just with that box and nothing else. And I just, you know, day in and day out, ingested a tape into the computer, watched it, slept, you know, 24 hours a day around the clock. And by the end of, essentially it was about 10 or 12 days, by the end of that time, I realized, wow, this is amazing raw footage that's very um, universal. I have a unique story here, and so it needs to be a film. And now I have to learn how to make a film. (laughs) So... Yeah, um, but uh, I needed, I definitely needed that distance of, you know, five or six years. Yeah, uh, there's a difference between footage and a film, yeah. <laughs> that, and you hadn't had that experience, right? Mm-hmm. Did you lean on Mary for helping with that, or did she come on later? Or? Mary came on um, towards the end of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, in the very beginning, I had an editor, um, Bara Jacoba Tyson, um, who helped me for a uh, very early part of kind of wading through the masses of, yeah. amount. How much, how much did that add up to, all, um, the, all, all those tapes that you went you through? You know, I, I really don't know precisely, but I'm guessing maybe around um, 80 hours oh, okay. or more. Oh, that's a lot. Um, but a lot of that was also the nature footage. Sure, sure, um, right, right, yeah. And... Uh, I mean, I would have a tape in the camera and go kind of seamlessly from one location to the next and do a lot of my own video journaling. So it was all combined. Um, yeah. But uh, the, 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 the intense process that was really necessary was about three years of my editing this alone. And that's what I needed to, um, to kind of uh, get familiar with the um, material and, and also... Um, uh, have some conceptual strategies of how to edit the film. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then at the very end, I had a fine cut editor, um, Lori Sullivan, come in just for a few oh, days. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, to kind of help it, help put the final touch on it. Right. Um, and, and, and Mary, of course, also at the very end, did help with um, some of this uh, kind of deciding the final shape. I, I wonder if your family returned to you in some way if you felt reintroduced to them on some level by all the the process or the or making the film absolutely yeah um some people ask me well wasn't it really depressing to make this film um but honestly it really wasn't mm-hmm. um going through all the footage was pretty remarkable um what i thought was going to be on the tapes was not there um, and what was was completely surprising. Mm-hmm. So it right off the bat kind of set up the, um, you know, what's different in memory as opposed to recorded. What do you what what is, can you like uh, articulate an example of what you thought was there that that was not there and that or or mm. on the other hand what. Yeah, what, well, what, what what was was there that you didn't know was there? This some example. I mean, this editing process r- was kind of remarkably joyful because mm-hmm. I was hanging out with my family again, and uh, I really um, very. Conf- it was very you were in the sense of as an observer, but as an observer editor, but also as a in the footage exactly um and so going through it was quite cathartic um Mm -hmm. but one of the things that surprised me that i thought i had was maybe a lot more footage of my mother with um with the baby however as i watched it i saw a kind of dynamic unfold that i don't think i was aware of at the time and it was actually my father was the one holding the baby all the time and uh throughout the film you'll frequently see 
um, Audrey draped on his arm or, um, you know, he, he's walking around with her. Right. He appears over and over and over with the baby. And Do you think that goes back or that before even earlier? Well, no, you didn't have a baby, so you wouldn't know. But uh, I wonder if that was really because your mom was weakening, do you think? Or she was some because of her own feelings about her, her state of pathology? Or um, It's really hard for me to know what mm-hmm. it was on my mom's side. But I will say on my dad's side, I think it must have been extremely comforting. Right. Oh, I see. And uh, sure. he... Uh, is not a man, he, you know, because he's uh, a doctor and he's a pretty logical guy and he's not somebody who um, I would say normally is, mm-hmm. you know, trying to hold babies. <laughs> so that was a surprise to me because mm. it made me see his character in a different way. Uh, well, again, the film is called Instructions on Party, directed by Amy Jenkins. Your children, you, of course, one we know was uh, the your older child was born and is a major part of this component of this film, but it obviously doesn't have any memory of, of, of your family. I wonder what your both your kids make of when they see it now. I'm sure they were at your at a screening, mm. um, if not seeing it during while you're making it. Do, what are they? What's their response to well, seeing this family they never got the chance to know in person? I think that it's really interesting for them because they can get to know the Jenkins dynamic, Mm -hmm. um, which is somewhat unusual and a little different than the, than my husband's family. Um, and, uh, so in that way, I mean, the film has kind of a dual function because I made it intentionally kind of universal without getting into a whole lot of the character um, traits of my family members um, so that people who don't know my family um, can almost apply their own situations and their own family to the film. Mm -hmm. So I intentionally did not get really um, uh, specific with the the kind of jobs anybody had or, or even what um, their di- cancer diagnoses are. Um, but uh, one thing I did um, feel good about in regards to making the film was that um, my children would have this document sure. of who we were as a family, especially right. like the family slideshow that appears in the, in the film. It's very meta. You have a slideshow within your film. Yeah. <laughs> um, which was this unique moment where my dad um, did... Uh, you know, compiled all the the slides from our childhood from the time each of us were born until we went to college. And uh, it's this, I just am so thankful that I recorded it because ultimately the five of us are just sitting around watching this slideshow and totally kind of riffing off each other and making fun of each other, just, you know, behaving such the way a family would, you know, oh, look, dad's got black socks on and, you know, and, um, this was your Christian phase. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, uh, right. Yeah. You were in Utah after, uh, what is your dad still alive? He said, right? He is. He's still, he's, he's doing okay. Yeah. Is it, what is, so was it hard for him to see the film? I mean, he lost, it's a loss for him had to be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, um, the way, our, the way our close, our family members observe the film is quite different than, um, but then, but I do want to emphasize that I did make this film for the rest of, um, for the out, outside world as opposed to my family. Right. And I understand that's right. This is a, I suppose about how. One deals with um, letting go. Yes, absolutely. And, um, I mean, there are all different forms of letting go. There's a sort of letting go when you have a child and um, when, you know, they um, come into the world. Um, And, uh, I mean, one of the important components of the film is kind of tracking the fact that... uh, you know, the, my firstborn infant is kind of this wide open shell in the beginning and is slowly kind of finding their personhood um, and becoming who they are at the same time that my other family members are kind of letting go of their personhood and um, 
uh, becoming more of a s- sort of um, container. Um, so these two cross cross events are are are, are quite um, important in the film. Uh, and then we did. I just saw uh, instructions on parting at Montclair and got to meet you. And I'm very glad I did. And I'm, thank you for coming and and, and talking about the film. And uh, we'll we'll let people know how they can see it. Absolutely. Um, do you want me? To yeah, yeah. You could do know? it. Yeah, yeah. You can. I mean, well, we can talk about when I should put it up. But you know. yeah, yeah. Um, so I can give you future dates. Um, but uh, in June second is White. River Indie Fest in uh-huh. Vermont, um, and in uh, mid June is uh, the Sydney Film Festival in Australia. Those okay. are two. We'll upcoming post dates. those dates, and, yeah. we'll, and we'll keep people abreast. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. It was really thank nice you for me. having me.